Um, so this icon here is the history icon that takes you to the history pages. Um, okay, so on the left hand side here, we've got the um, menu here, so you can scroll that like any other scroll menu, and you can select the uh, history files. Now, history files are saved in, um, in numerical order, um, which is a file name that's created by uh, a timestamp. Um, and that's what you're seeing here. So basically you're seeing um, 2020, 11th month, 06 is the day, and then you've got T for time, um, and then you've got a, a time which you're not going to be able to decipher. Um, but they will be in order from when, when you made those shots. And what I've done is um, put this list in order of uh, newest at the top. Um, so if you use your file explorer and look at those files, they're going to be in likely the reverse order, depending how you've got your settings set. But um, if we click the last shot, um, it was made here. So this is my wife's coffee this morning and something's gone horribly wrong here. Um, so I might I'll just delete that one. Um, so this is the shot from, uh, from her shot yesterday morning. Um, now this time stamp here is converted up here to the date time up here so you can refer to, uh, well you can see here exactly when that shot was made. So that was made uh, Thursday morning on the 5th of November at um, 4 minutes to 6 in the morning. Um, this is the profile that was used. So we've got here the DSX uh, copy mocker. Um, so this profile was um, moved on by uh, weight here. So it's moved on and it's detected uh, 0.5 grams in the cup or whatever sitting it was. Um, and then it's moved on the pressure step here. It's moved on as well to maintain uh, the constant flow. Um, on this side, you've got the exact same thing. Um, that, actually, I'll go back here, I missed this part. Down the bottom here, you've got information about that shot. So you've got, uh, this is your extraction ratio. So you've got your beam weight and you've got your um, weight, your final weight uh, of the shot. So that where it stopped at weight, but this is the actual weight that you measured. So in this case, it was a, a one to three shot. Um, it was 18 grams in, 50, 54 grams out, so 53.8. Um, with this profile, I started um, at step two, monitoring the water. Um, where I'll show you in the advanced profile in the limits tab where you could um, set what step you wanted um, to start that volume. Even though I had that volume set to off, um, I had the step set to step two. So that starts recording that water um, that was used from um, the end of step two, which is when it starts building up pressure here. So basically it's showing me that I, I use, um, the machine thinks it used 83, gram, uh, 83 mils of water, and I've got 83 point grams out, which means it's uh, pretty spot on. Uh, sorry, no, it's not. I just made a fool of myself, but anyway, it says I've got 83 grams out, so I've started that from, from the start, so it's including all this water here. But anyway, you could step that, set that to step two and check how close you're getting to um, the stop of weight. And the advantage of doing that is, um, say for instance, I've got a, a band and I might um, go away for the weekend, take my machine with me, um, and I don't want to take the scar with me. Um, so I can check in my history here to see how much water those shots were taking. And you can see here, I'm going back through these same profiles, same extraction ratio, and the volume used is the same, it's 83 grams. Um, it might change slightly, so it went up five grams and I'll explain why that is in a minute. Um, so what I can do now is go back to that profile list, to the limits here, and I can set that to uh, 83 grams, and I'll start immediately. Um, so if I, I'm just tapping here to go one step in, so I'll set that 83 grams, uh, 83 mils, sorry. And it's gonna stop, um, I'm giving the same extraction ratio, it's gonna stop at the same. Um, it may not quite be as accurate, um, but it's gonna be pretty close. Um, and it's pretty consistent. So, um, so that's that's the advantage of recording this information on having a look back through your history and, and seeing that information there.
Um, so the same information is on the right hand side here and what I've done is um, enabled you to load two, two different profiles, so uh, two different history shots. So you've got um, this one here and if I want to check the, the day before, um, you can see here by the dates, this is Wednesday, Thursday. Um, and these are my wife's shots because um, I can tell by the time. Um, she's used the same profile and I might want to compare them so I can say, okay, well, I've got to stop them exactly the same weight. Um, this one's got a little bit more water in the cup. And the reason for that is, uh, if you look closely, where the drops are coming in the cup, it's a little bit later. Um, and the reason being is, um, when this shot started, um, the line coming up to the group head was um, dry. Um, so it had been sitting for some time or there was no water pump up or for whatever reason. And uh, it takes um, pretty well every time, it takes exactly five mil um, at the start of the profile to, for water to fill that line up and get to the group head. Um, so, so often I'll find I've got exactly five mil difference between two profiles. Um, and that, and that's, that's the reason for that. Um, so I can compare those and go, okay, well, you know, things are looking pretty good. You can see um, there's a bit of difference here in the, in the table length of time and stuff, and that's because um, the grinder setting has changed. The bean's got a, a little bit age about them, or we might have used a different bean or something, and we've changed the grinder setting, so it's, it's given us a different curve. Um, but the point is, you can see them side by side and compare and, and look for differences. Um, what we can do with this right hand side is we can actually view our um, uh, we can, our God shots. Um, so those of you that are familiar with what God shots are, um, John has created um, this page here, or these pages here, which are God shots. And basically, with your last shot, or the current shot you're displaying, um, you can save that here as a God shot, and you'll save a graph. And then what happens is that graph on your home page here, um, that graph will overlay. Um, and the idea is to try and do your shot to you trace that shot. Um, it's, a, it's a feature that I don't use, but what I've done, um, so I'm probably not describing, um, describing it the best, but what I've done is you can tap this button here and you can, it'll bring up the list of God shots you might have. So now you can compare, um, if you've saved the God shot, you can load that God shot here and you can compare um, any one of your history shots to that God shot. Um, so I, I'm just using the history, so I made the history. What I can do though is um, overlay in a similar way to what the God shot does on the home page graph um, by using this button. Um, if I tap this button here, it'll um, overlay those two um, history files for those two, those two graphs. So it's overlaying this and this. Um, with the left one as a solid and the, um, the broken line as the right. Um, so if I was to lay the same profile, you can see they're gonna mirror each other exactly. But, um, so that's what this is. I don't actually use it, but this one's there. Um, you can decide you wanna use it. Um, these buttons here, we've got, uh, we can turn the temperature off and on on the graph. So um, you can see I'm toggling that and it's just, Putting that temperature graph, uh, temperature curve off, so it's not on any large graph either. So to enlarge those graphs, um, just tap either graph and it will um, get a full screen view. Um, so that's just toggling the temperature curve off. Um, I can toggle um, the goal curve on and off as well, so you can see the dotted line on these graphs of the, um, the profile goal curve. So you can toggle that on and off. Um, and the resistance curve. So I think that resistance curve, I, I haven't been using the resistance curve, but I think I've got a uh, different algorithm there. You can see there's a different curve. Um, so I'm using a different algorithm. I can't remember which one I put there. Um, that's why it looks a bit different. So I might fix that up and make it the same. It hasn't already. Um, so because I've got it, I've turned it off. Um, so that's what those buttons do. 
This button here is a remove button, so you notice before when I um, made a shot, so if I was to run uh, a simulated shot here on the sim, you can see that the curve just, uh, is just rubbish basically, it's just uh, random numbers, random information. Um, and if I stop that, it's going to save it to my history file here on my Mac, uh, which is this file here now. Um, and because I don't want those files, um, I've just put a, uh, a remove button here. Um, so if I select um, the file and then I tap this button, um, you can see it disappeared from here, although it's still loaded into memory. So um, if I move that file, so if I tap this top one now, it loads um, all the profiles from history. Um, the other advantage of doing that is, um, when this list gets very long, it can cause the, cap, uh, the app to become laggy. Um, it can also be hard to scroll. Um, Barney's made a new algorithm for the scroll bar and it works quite well now, but um, in the past, sometimes the scroll bar might not have been long enough or, or for whatever reason, um, you might want to shorten that list up and you can do that by um, selecting the profile and moving it to um, um, tapping the remove button. Now, it doesn't actually lose the profile. So if I bring up um, a file explorer again, what it's doing is um, uh, it's putting it into a, a history archive. So DSX will cr create a folder here called history archive. Um, and all those history files um, that I use that delete button for will go and transfer from the history folder across the history archive folder. So, um, that way you might actually delete them and lose them and you've got them there if you want to look at them next year or whenever. Um, but because that history archive file doesn't load with the app, it, um, it can be as long as you like and it won't slow anything down. So that's, that's what that feature is about. Hey, Damien, I think it makes sense for that history archive feature to be based by date and to be something I put into the app. So you can have, for example, a rolling 30 days of archive. I like the way you've done it to move it so we don't delete it. I don't know what you think of that. Yeah. Yeah, I think it's a good idea. The way I, I'm probably not using it that much. I'm using it more to delete files than I'm using that I want. But um, I'm, I'm using the File Explorer. Um, and because I've got it connected, uh, synced up to, um, so I'm using a Samsung tablet for my copy machine. And if I tap, if I look at that folder there, um, my history files are going to be synced with my tablet. So as soon as I make a shot on my tablet, it's going to show up here straight away. Um, so what I'm doing here is I'm basically just grabbing these files and, and dumping them, but I'm saving them on my computer um, just in case something happens. I sometimes change tablets and things like that, or um, so that Android crashed um, and I lost that folder. Um, I've got a backup of all my shots on my computer. So that's an alternative way. If you want to do it in app, I think that button is a good way. And if, um, um, John could put that into the app sort of things. It might be another way of sorting it. Uh, there's one feature that came to mind that I thought might be useful here, which is you generally don't want to compare history shots that are made with different profiles, right? So if one is default and one is LRV2, it's not really useful to compare the curves. Um, so what I was thinking, looking at this, is if you tapped on the left, you know that it's DSX coffee machine. Uh, you know what the profile is, or Mocha, or whatever. Um, on the right-hand side, I would filter out all the history items that are not that same recipe, not that same profile, because you don't want to know about them. I don't know if yeah. that seems rational or not. Yeah, I think that's a good idea. I hadn't thought of that. Um... I probably don't compare that many side by side, I guess. So this, I haven't done that, but that would be a good option. You could have a button to just um, filter the list. Yeah, just just magically only show me on the right hand side history items that are made with the same profile, because I, I don't want to mm -hmm. compare different uh, history profile, uh, different shots exactly. That doesn't make a lot of sense comparing those two. Yeah, the only problem is. Um, Two shots you might want to compare it with temperature, which I haven't done yet, but I'm just thinking about um, where I, I'm just trying to find one. Where I, 
name, your profile name. Um, so where it puts a different profile name uh, for a different temperature um, and you're using the same profile. I'm wondering whether this shot resistance to the puck changes with hotter water, whether uh, hotter water passes through quicker or not, so you get a shorter shot time. Um, it's just something we're thinking there. That it might be something you want to toggle. That, that you know, filter checkbox. So you, you you filter the history automatically, or you don't want to. Um, yeah. I, you're right. You can see both use cases. But I think most of the time, you only want to compare shots that were made with the same profile. Yeah, yeah. So that's a good idea. Good suggestion. Um, the other possibility. I don't know if you want to do it. If you want to have a parent, because like this one that you've got right here, when you save it, if you change the name, we could have the original name, and have like a parent name and we don't ever change it so when you, if you load up Damien LRV2 and then you give it a new name we would just always save the parent name and that would allow you to to have multiple profiles of different variations but still know that they're they're related yeah I'm not sure whether that starts getting confusing because okay. say for instance if no, I was no, developing internally I mean you would just do that I'm not sure you would even expose it to the user uh, oh okay I'm, I'm with what you're saying there I think it does, doesn't it? Um, um, I mean, the idea is, is, is when you say save as, you would basically save original name inside the profile. Don't show it to the user, but that would allow you when you're looking at LRV2 and LRV2 nine degrees, you would know those are the same actual ones. The other yeah. thing that you could do if you want to be really lazy is not have the profiles match, but just does the history item contain the name on the left? Because on the right, you've just appended to it. So your filter could just look for LRV2 and is that substring in the profile yeah. on the right? If it is, they're close enough, compare them. Yeah, yeah, I understand. Yeah. I, I could see that getting very complicated because for instance, I change my profile name with the bean name appended so I can keep track of what, what the beans are that I'm using. And so you get an enormous number of variations in profiles and temperatures. That's right, that's what I was getting at too. But what John is saying is that um, I create a variable. So when you load a uh, profile, say for instance, um, you can see here I've changed that profile name to reflect the temperature. So you would, you're changing your profile name to reflect the bean type you're using. Um, what's important here is that the original profile name is uh, the prefix of the name here. Um, and what John is saying is if you load, say, the original profile here, um, and then you go and make changes, um, we recognize that original name, but save it uh, to the file. It's not something you'll see on the user interface, it's just something we say to the file so that when we go to history, we can sort by um, any file that's. Um, that might have a different name that originated from the from that uh, profile. Does that make sense? It, it it does as long as when you change the screen name, you don't you can't change the root name because sometimes I might want to the names get so long that I'll like truncate Damien's LRV two just LRV two. That's right. But the way we can do that is when we go to the profile list here. Um, say you want to experiment with a with one of the um, one of the profiles somebody's created or one of the default profiles. Say for instance, we want to um, just use the default for instance. Um, you would go into here and you would make your changes, um, whatever changes you want to make, and then you would go back here and you wouldn't say default. You you give it um, some unique name. So you might call it um, Harry's profile or something, right? But what we're going to do is recognize that you've loaded the default to start with. Okay, so now you can get rid of that default name over there, call it something else, call it Harry's profile here. Um, but when we go to the history, um, it's going to recognize that originated from the default profile. So now you can use a filtering to say, okay, let's load all profiles that originated from default. So yes, yes, it, that's exactly what I meant in terms of changing the screen name doesn't change the underlying foundation. That's right. 
That's right. So you would still see your name here that uh, indicates the whatever, uh, yeah. Yeah, whatever name you've used to indicate what changes you've made, etc. So, yeah, okay.